Ooh, that was a good one. It's just so much better when it goes off literally like 10 feet away from you. You feel the <laughs> Yeah. Face. What? Uh, I can feel the shock wave from it hit me. Oh! Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's freaking awesome. That was good. It's been a pretty good run here at Brap Star Garage. Right after the 4th of July, I got a call and you know, this is, everyone's gonna be thinking this is one of those videos with like a, we're getting evicted like, and it ends up being something else, but no, we're getting evicted and I have to get literally every single thing that's in this shop has to be out today. Uh, <laughs> I got a call from the landlord. These guys are absolute freaking slime balls. We already knew we had to leave because they were jacking up our rent by almost $1,500 a month, which everyone is, I, everyone's, a, everyone's a lawyer when it comes to some stuff like this, but being a lawyer don't do you no good when some dude's standing there changing the locks saying that he's gonna fucking take all your stuff to the dump. So whatever, man, they were rating our rent by 1,500 bucks a month. I couldn't afford it. And he said, well, you got till the end of the July to get your stuff out. I said, cool, that's awesome. Then he calls me today, which is July 5th, and says, I've been trying to get a hold of you. I get, I don't have a single missed call from this guy. No emails, no nothing. He goes, yeah, well, uh, you gotta be out today. And I'm like, well, you said the end of July. And of course he goes, well, yeah, I never said that. Anyway, so all this stuff has to be out today. Not only does it all have to be out today, but he said, if I didn't pay him $3,500 today, he was gonna change the locks and all this stuff was going to the dump. Uh, I had to not only get all my stuff out today, but also pay him $3,500 on top of it all, which let me tell you, well, it was either that or lose everything. I don't know what to tell you. And again, everyone's gonna be a lawyer about it in the comments, but it's fucking, what are you gonna do when somebody's got a gun to your head? And it's literally every single thing you have is on the line. Not only your stuff, but other people's stuff too. I got Shelby's Snap-on Toolbox in there. We got Flip's motorcycle over here. This is literally nothing I could do. Uh, so yeah, I have to move the shop in one day. We are getting evicted. This is it. This is it. Rapstar Garage is over. That's it. It's done. This is no longer Rapstar Garage. And that's pretty, I, to say I'm angry is, uh, is a incredibly, incredibly vast understatement. Um, but there you go. That's that. This would already be pretty stressful, but on top of it, I'm supposed to be on a plane to Portland at 6.15 a.m. It's now about 2.30 in the afternoon. So I somehow gotta figure out how to move like 15 motorcycles that don't run, all these parts, every single thing in this shop in like the next eight hours and find a place for it to stay because I'm supposed to fly to Portland and pick up a shovel head and ride it all the way back to Tampa, about 4,000 miles. So. I think we got our work cut out for us. <laughs> Can you get evicted and go on a cross country motorcycle trip on a 44 year old bike uh, all in a 24 hour period? I guess we're about to find out. I would love to say that this is dramatized for the video. I would love to, you guys have no idea how much I would love to say that. How much I would love to be like, yeah, oh, it's not that crazy. My life isn't that crazy. We're not that much up against the wire. It's all just kind of like blown up for YouTube and we make it seem more dramatic. That's not the, that's not the fucking case. It is exactly <laughs> on the wire as, as I make it seem in the video. Usually more so because I don't want to overdo it in the video because I make it, I think, feel like it'll make people think I'm, I'm exaggerating and making it up. No, it, the situation is this insane. Let's get to work. Gotta record this one for posterity, man. Okay, Tim, come over here. Yeah. Stop. Hold it here. I cannot believe that works. <laughs> 
<laughs> no damage, everybody's happy. I cannot believe that one. No loss of life for him. <laughs> Just so. All right, it's good to have good friends. Shelby, Mike Branch, Pretty Josh just left, Nomad Josh 13, of course, David, the boys, my man Amadeus in there, uh, and the Rocket 3 runs, by the way. David's a fan, go figure, he likes fast motorcycles too. Uh, very quickly, in the past several hours, because I have the help of good friends who love me very much, this has gone from Rap Star Garage to almost empty. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, slowly, slowly not becoming not a garage anymore. Um, anyway. It's sad, it's frustrating. I'm supposed to leave tomorrow morning, but now where I was getting frustrated, David reminded me that what I should really feel is I should feel thankful and my feeling should be thankfulness that I have so many amazing people in my life who are willing to drop whatever they're doing to help me out and make this happen. And I do, I feel pretty fucking special right about now and very, very fortunate. And even though things are kind of shitty, they're never that shitty when you got a bunch of good people on your side. It grows ever ever emptier. <sighs> Holy shit, man. All right, well, uh, I've been up since sometime yesterday. The days always kind of blend together when you're up for over 24 hours, but I am officially in Portland. You hear all the stories about Portland. I'm like, as soon as I step off the, the plane and breathe in the air, am I gonna turn into a left-handed Eskimo lesbian midget? <laughs> but no, I still remain shade tree surgeon. And uh, even though I've got a lot in common with left-handed Eskimo lesbian midgets, it's, no, just not the left-handed part. Anyway, my man Circus Bear Moto here, picking us up, doing the thing, helping me out. He's the one who got this bike. He's the one who picked it up. He's the one who took it to the shop to get inspected. I owe this guy a great deal. And he's made a couple videos on it that may or may not be out by the time this comes out. Uh, we'll see about that. But less than 24 hours ago, I was busting my hump, moving the shop in a single day. And then I got into a plane and now I'm in Portland, Oregon, picking up a 44 year old vintage Harley Davidson that the plan is to ride some 4,000 miles back to Tampa on. Nothing could go wrong. Nothing could go wrong. You know what could go, you know what could go wrong? Everything. You know what could go right? Everything. I don't know, man. You just gotta have faith. That's what I always say. And it's easy for me to say because somehow God loves an idiot. It just ends up working out for me. And uh, apparently Circus Bear Moto thinks that too because they're just go, what do you think the odds are? He's like, oh, you'll be fine. I'm like, yeah, you know what I like? Toxic positivity. Yep. <laughs> that's, All of it. that's our game right now. My man here greeted me with a monster that's gone and a freaking hot pickle. So he may be not a lesbian Eskimo midget, but it might be a gay Eskimo midget from my man Circus Bear over here. Dude, it looks freaking gorgeous out there, man. It's a big ass city. It's like, nah, I, thought, I, don't, I don't know what I expected. My camera, this thing could even work. I'm using Cami's camera. Look at that downtown, it's so beautiful. Yeah. I thought it was supposed to adjust. Anyway, this is the second time Cami's camera has been to Portland. Okay, now that the shutters, the ISO, whatever it is, is fixed, behold the majesty of Portland, I guess. I mean, I don't know, it's a bunch of fucking office buildings. What do you want from me? That's a cool bridge, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I get excited about everything. That's my whole thing. I'm like, behold, the majesty of Portland. Then I look at it later when I'm editing. I'm like, yeah, it's just a fucking city. What a it's whatever. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know. I'm excited. So my man Circus Bear over here goes, I got just the place for you. This is where he took the shovel head to get worked on. It's Legion Motorcycle Co. When you see everything out front from Harleys to XS 650s and even uh, a, a CB 750 with a wind jammer on it over there, that sounds like my kind of place. But even more so, when I see when I see a sign that says bar, then I'm really into it. All right, we're getting the Grand Tour from Victoria. And again, same on the inside as the outside. We got Gold Wings, Ducatis. Uh, adventure bikes. I forgot. CB750 chopper. Is that an original chop? Is that what, this guy? Yeah, yeah. Um, this is Eric, so I don't know. That's wild, I like it. Oh no, it just kind of sits here. I, would, I can't talk, no shit. I got a couple of choppers that just sit there myself. <laughs> All right, Kyle, will you give my over under on this making it 4,000 trouble free miles? <laughs> it's gonna be painful. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be pretty cool. See, oh, you know what? You can say it's gonna be great, not a single problem, because by the time it breaks down, it'll be so far away. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, man? I'm Josh, dude. So nice, nice to meet you. you. I'm Kyle. Kyle, do you mind being on camera at all? No, not at all. Okay. Well, I really appreciate you, man. I don't mind if it breaks down. I'm not very good at working on motorcycles, but I am very determined. Yeah, the shovelhead takes determination. Yeah. <laughs> Determination in 65 miles an hour, but I will tell you guys, this is going back to Florida to become a raffle bike that 100% of it's getting donated to charity. So the whole ride is to, is to that's just for me. 
<laughs> so I'm like, oh yeah, we're taking it back to charity. I'm just like, yeah, but I'm just doing the ride. I could have shipped it back, but <laughs> screw that. Well, that's what I said. I'm like, man, this was the bike. You know, you didn't ride cross country on a, on an XS 650 in, in the 60s and 70s. You did it on a shovel head. And I've never done it on a shovel head. Though. I have done it on a, on a silver wing. I did Which is crazy, because now I'm just like, oh yeah, you people used to go cross country on shovel heads, and they did. And that oh, yeah. was a bike to do it on in the 60s, but 1979, the silver wing and the gold wing were a thing, so maybe a few less people were doing it on the shovel head. <laughs> there were better options available, but by God damn it, this is what we're doing it on. All right, I'll let you get back to work. The fact that it lived its life with an oil cooler, I think is a good sign. I just, whenever I see an old car, old Harley and it's got an oil cooler on it, I'm like, thank God, at least somebody was thinking about the longevity of the engine. Did, did these originally come with no oil filter? As far as I understand. Okay. So somebody gave a fuck about the engine lasting, which yeah. is a very good sign. Oh, damn, somebody built it. These were, I... Somebody's been in there at least once. Yeah, it's just like the tough guy shovel thing, like the old PM single pods yeah. and all this yeah. stuff is that somebody back in the day was like, we're gonna make this bike rip in 1989 or 90 when the bike was like 10 years old, which is exactly what someone would do now with a Dyna or a bike that was a few years old. Yeah. I'm gonna keep it like this. We're gonna do a resto on it, but I'm gonna upgrade the suspension and clean some stuff up. And when we raffle it off, I'm gonna be like, you gotta sign a waiver. No grinders, no torches. This yeah. bike stays. <laughs> There's plenty of other shit to chop, dude. Don't do it to one that was, somebody loved this thing and was like, I wanna build it to rip, dude. Leave it that way. Exactly. Buy a project that someone tried to shop and do it to that instead. Not something that somebody loved enough to do all this stuff to it. Somebody fucking loved this motorcycle. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. I love that, dude. I mean, and that the difference. If we just wanted it to be perfect, we just drive cars. But yeah. somebody loved it and they spent the money on it and they made it theirs. And I think that's a legacy that we can continue on this bike. But anyway, I'll yap all, I'll yap all fucking day. I'll I'm going to plug that hole with a beer. <laughs> and I'll let you do your thing, man. Thank you right so on. much for being on camera. Yeah. Thank you so much for making this happen, dude. Oh, you guys are amazing. So I just got the rest of the story on this freaking insane CB750 chopper. And yes, it is a survivor. So in the same way that that shovel is a survivor of the 90s bad boy, <laughs> 90s bad boy shovel, this is an original hippie killer right here, man. And I know a lot of these have these crazy parts that some you'll find like sand casted aluminum parts that just some dude in his garage made and like sold a hundred of them to, to Easy Rider magazine to sell on the yeah. back catalog or something like that and you ain't yeah, never gonna find them nowhere else it's sad to see how things have gone now but also gives you hope for the future because i see so many people sand casting parts now and learning how to do it that the art the art of making choppers making them yourself and having a vision of what you want a part to look like as long as you can melt aluminum and yep. form sand that will never die, never die. Yep. <laughs> if you wanted to if you had enough to the original cd 750 the engines were sand cast the yep. very, very very early ones if you wanted to, you could make that engine. You could do that in the whole thing. You could, backyard. Yeah. yeah, you could make it in your backyard. You had enough time I mean, patience. not not you, not me, no. definitely not me, but somebody else. <laughs> yeah, somebody else. With enough time, anyway. Yeah. Oh, that's fucking awesome, man. Good, good on you for bringing that back to life, dude. That's so fucking cool. You know what people get hurt on? This when they're drunk. As if this place could not get any freaking better. Victoria takes us back here and goes, oh, and there's a bar too. <laughs> Freaking phenomenal. I know where we're hanging out tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much. All right, is this uh, who makes the bad ombre? Level? Yeah. Level Delicious. I love it. I'll take 10 more. <laughs> Do you guys got a four loco neon? Oh, we have. Hell yeah. Okay. I've gotten a lot of great welcomes here uh, since I've been in for the few hours, the few scant hours that I've been in Portland. I pulled up to the airport. My man, Circus Bear Moto, greeted me with a, uh, with a pickle and an ice cold monster. I went and had some beers with the boys over at Legion Moto. And I saw my man Jason here from Sugar Tree Farms. And like I said, the gifts don't stop coming <laughs> here in Portland, Oregon. I don't wanna hear no, no shit talked about this city. High time, not just any awards, but high time, dude. That's some Oscars of weed right there. <laughs> Damn, dude, that that smells like a freaking bowl. It smells like a bowl of fruit. Yeah. My man right here. So this won the best uh, sun-grown sun-grown bud in Portland, which is a 
Nice little purple. Nuts. Portland or yeah. Oregon? And- yeah, Oregon, 2019. Oh, no. Let me shut up about that Portland shit. That's Oregon in general, dude. Now, let me tell you what. This motherfuckers out here smoke some weed, so that ain't no joke. <laughs> what I love about this is the same thing with craft beers. It's like sometimes you just want to spliff with a little bit of tobacco and some freaking Mexican brick in it. But sometimes you want something fancy. So a lot of times I'll, uh, I'll have my, my Coors Banquet or my Miller High Life. But I like a funny sour beer every now and then. And that's the same thing with, with all these stuff going into marijuana where it's just like dude you see here you go from this is your brick weed and all of a sudden here's your off the wall one-off sour weed that don't even freaking taste like weed when you smoke it so sugar tree farms again has something for everybody i can't do this stuff i'm gonna try that forbidden fruit and the gorilla snacks but uh this right here is 98 percent. what was this called it's called can- our canary diamonds canary diamonds 98 percent extract right there and I think that's finally gonna make Shay sit down. Yeah, this is sit down. This I can't be doing do the job. I can't be doing the space weed, but yeah. let me tell you what, man. For you guys who like that stuff, he was just telling me how the extract process works, and this is uh, like these guys... resin right here. So this is just a little bit different as well. More in the eighty percent THC range. Only eighty percent. Only huh? eighty. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, it is. It's like going from your regular freaking session beer going up to like a double barrel age freaking stout that's going to knock you on your ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh. and, it's a, and, and it makes noises. Let me get the bowl on that. No way, dude. <laughs> It's got the carb down low. Listen, li- oh my God, listen up, dude. You get me on some of this freaking gorilla snacks, I'm gonna be on Dago Buff, uh, freaking losing my mind in the in the, in the caves, man. <laughs> like, oh man, that's a nice bag, right? Until I put my hand on it, and you're like, yo, that's not a bag, dude. That's a that's a trash <laughs> that's a trash bag, dog. <laughs> Holy crap, dude, that makes me feel cool. <laughs> this is yo. <laughs> That seems like a lot. Like this is the daddy Holy of shit. the extract machines right here. So we have this machine out there that you just tore this this in, and it was basically put some these five pound pucks, and then you load them in these socks, and these socks drop right in here. Uh, this dude, that's here. like it sounds like a smoker. It is. <laughs> like the one that drops pellets, or like you know yeah. what I mean? You're being yeah. on top. Yeah. This is basically the finished product it would look like in sugar. So this this is all basically full of butane, and so it pushes these caps out. Yeah, yeah. So they'll start to let let the butane out slowly, you know, because this is a C1D1 oh. room, so this is an explosion proof room in here. So anything gotcha. that we have that's like butane or, or fill any type of butane has to be in here. Yeah. Man, you guys are legit. Yeah, you're on top of it. Yeah, we're trying to make. Well, the you best know what? You know what keeps going? We possibly can. It's like I keep going. Like, can I pull my camera out? Yeah. He goes like, Yeah, I got nothing to hide. So <laughs> he goes like, Yeah, fucking show it. So your you machine just it. bails it up like this, and then goes into those. See, that's that's already been processed. Put it into these socks right here. So when these these are ready to go, ready to be dropped into that's the machine right here. Wild. And then this machine fills up with the butane propane mix right here. Actually, we cover almost 80% of the butane. So, wow. that, and then once it's done and we've we've ran the material, we take that to a place where they turn it back into mulching. No it. shit. And so every piece of the plant we actually use. There's no waste here at all. And this is the 99, 98% pure THC. You like lose the liquid on top? Yeah, this is just all terpenes left over. So this stuff up here can go straight right into a car. But yeah. this stuff down here is like the leftover 99. Like this, <laughs> this, this is just pure THC. The rest is the rest of the plant. Yeah. That's a plant in liquid form. That's the good stuff. And that's just the sure. THC in fucking crystal form. That's wild. Just finished up. That is so, it's so much. Isn't that just this insane is... amounts of extracts? That's this insane. Is beautiful, right? This is uh, what wow. Shay would really like right here. These are finished diamonds. That's the these diamonds. are our, these are our yellow birds, yeah. I'm gonna have to take your word on that one because that's too yeah. powerful for me. This would hurt you, buddy. Yeah. This would Where is, this is nothing I would ever even do, but it is very interesting. And I have a lot of friends that, that would, be very excited to do it but for me i'm just like yo give me like a half swisher half half of the lowest thc got but like this stuff is so very cool man i mean you can have fun shooting a 22 and still appreciate a 308 so back up here we went from uh smokables let me tell you what man legion motors that is where it's at whenever you have a place and the owner of the place is back there pouring beer that's a, that's something i like man because let me tell you what why would you ever open a place that has a bar if you didn't get four beers yourself it's always fun <laughs> and speaking of, speaking of, speaking of, listen up, baby. 
Willow. You can't, es you can't escape me. I All right. Can't. I got a certain kind of animal magnetism. I'm everything you hate and nothing you want, but you come anyway. I ran across the country to get away from you. I mean, we're here. Too bad, baby. I was like, man, Amanda Zitto's <laughs> here, <laughs> Circus Fair <laughs> Moda's here. And then all of a sudden, once he bought some beers, I'm like, oh my gosh, man, old friends and, and new roads is here too, man. <laughs> he just joined the party. He's only been here for an hour, but now he bought some beers, so go subscribe to him, man. Yay! Let me tell you what, it don't take much, I'm easy. It's not even the beer, though. It's just good times, good right. friends, and good people who came out to hang out with here at Legion Moto in downtown Portland, man. You can talk all the shit about Portland you want. I'm having a good time. There's good people down here. The beer is cold. The motorcycles are loud. I dig it. I do mean that, by the way. Anyway, we got the shovel head over here by the dumpsters. No, I've never ridden it. The only person here who's ridden it is Circus Fair Moto. All right. You tell me if you think it'll make it across the country. <laughs> just watch out for all the oil that spilled on the ground earlier. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> You'll be fine. It starts, that's a good sign. Well, hey, if Amanda wrecks it, then I can fly home. <laughs> There she goes. Sounds like a Harley. Got some pressure wall on the tires so they won't overheat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's how cool Shade Tree is. He comes to pick up a bike, doesn't even ride it before he gives it to Amanda. I want to make sure it's okay. She's yeah. like my world taker. Pig. Yeah. <laughs> What's the verdict? 70-year-old motorcycle it feels like 70-year-old brakes too. Oh, well, the brakes are optional. <laughs> it's like somebody described what it's like to brake in a different language. <laughs> what do you think? Do you think it'll make it back to Tampa? It's only 4,000 miles. Oh, yeah. You've done the trip. Oh, yeah, it'll be fine. Oh, uh, okay. Well, it's got the Amanda Zitto seal of approval. Who's been cross country before, so obviously we're going to be fine. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Ride safe. Go follow a girl here on Instagram. She hit a bear. man here gave me a couple of warnings, a couple of admi admissions, and said, keep it below 65 and you should be fine. Yeah. And if you're not fine, well, that's just a shovel, isn't it? That's the life of a shovel. There's nothing you can do about that. Thank you so much for everything you did and for making it happen. Yeah, man. anytime. Glad you guys help. fucking rock. Right safe. <laughs> <laughs> if you wonder, if you wonder from my merriment, if you wonder from my laugh, Amanda Zitto just asked for a LaCroix. I did not! I said LaCroix! <laughs> yeah, I know, that's worse. I was trying to make you feel sound better. <laughs> anyway, uh, he gave me a Rainier, which I, sounds like Reynard, which is French for Fox. Rainier. <laughs> and I don't mind French stuff, dude. There's this weird American thing where everyone's just like, the French sur surrender monkeys, like, they get mad at French people. I don't know why that's such a uniquely American thing, just like me. But I'm like, yo. Have you ever had cognac? <laughs> Have you ever had escargot? Have you ever had champagne? Like, France is awesome. <laughs> like, don't even fucking try me with that shit. Rainier? Delicious, dude. Come on. Amazing. I love it. How's your polar pro? I love my seltzer. Don't judge yeah? me. Yeah? You like your fucking TV static? Uh, my man, Mike, uh, lost on the road 21. A bunch of underscores. I'll put it down there. And his absolutely lovely wife, his better half. And when I say better half, I mean like better three quarters. They came up here and uh, on the road King Kong, the 131. It's wild to see this thing again in the flesh. You guys, I spent a lot of time on this motorcycle. And now, and now my man here spent a lot of time on it he's taken all over the place if you go to his instagram he's been up and down he's been all over all these kinds of deserts him and his wife i just love it man it just is so cool and it makes me feel so good about these raffles to know that these bikes that are getting raffled off people win they actually get used and it's really good to see him again it's been uh, officially amanda zitto tested and it holds up against the africa twin i guess i i ought to see what it's like to actually ride this thing i've ridden shovel heads before um they've been choppers i've never ridden a shovel head with suspension this is actually my first time riding a shovel head with a hand clutch too every shovel head i've ridden before this has a foot clutch all right, run. Well, they ain't that much different from Nevo. Oh, shoot, baby. That feels like a motorcycle to me. Why couldn't this go 4,000 miles? Oh, I might have to take the mirrors off. Those don't think, that, I don't think those are gonna work for me. 
I might be a little too wide for these mirrors to work. Come on now. Oh, everybody said the brakes sucked. Obviously, they've never ridden stock Harley-Davidson brakes, okay? Stock Harley-Davidson single pot calipers. These are PM calipers are way worse than this. What's the worst that could happen? Come on, <laughs> this is gonna be just fine. Uh, no problem at all, this thing is fine. A Goldwing wishes it could be this bike. A Goldwing had to be comfortable and nice to be as nice as this. And also you can leave the key in this and nobody will seal it. Choke you, I bet you like that. You, where'd that boner come from? And be like, I thought about some other shit. I thought about some boobs earlier. It wasn't because you choked me. Trust me, I heard that excuse before. I just said all my goodbyes. I should have filmed my goodbyes. I didn't, because they were special to me. I don't need to film my goodbyes. To all my friends here. Those ones are just for me. The first leg of the shovelhead journey. All right, guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. One great leap for man, one giant step for scumbag kind. You rev it and it all moves around. I love that the it's the low tolerances that do it for me. I mean, if you have a, if you have loose tolerances, you just have a, a better chance of everything not rattling loose, right? Right. I'll say this, it still hasn't dawned on me that I'm riding a shovel head 4,000 miles back to Tampa. I still just, I, I don't know if I feel it yet. I don't know if I understand what exactly I have signed up for. I mean, it, it, <laughs> it rides fine, I guess. It feels like it's about to break, but isn't that normal for a motorcycle that's 44 years old? That doesn't seem that weird. It is only a four speed and I am a, going almost 50 miles an hour and I'm definitely feeling it, Mr. Krabs. This is definitely vibrating. Don't change its name from the Hurley to the Hitachi. And it also just fell out of fourth gear. Not the greatest sign, but we're back in there. We're rolling almost 60 miles an hour. That's fast enough to go across the country, right? 60 miles an hour. I've been told by a bunch of shovel experts to not take it over 65. That 60, you can pass over that if you want to. You can pass at 70, 75 if you really need to. But as far as like sustained speed, don't try to go over 65. So that's what we're shooting for. I'm not making this up. I literally was moving my shop less than 24 hours ago. And now here I am all the way across the country in Portland, Oregon from Tampa, Florida, trying to figure out how I'm gonna ride a vintage 44 year old Harley Davidson home. What's the worst that could happen? Okay, I'm here in a odd liminal space. I don't know where there is to eat. Although I am very hungry, uh, across the street is a incredibly neon edifice. I just want to want. Uh, I just want to ask the audience, which way would you go from here? Every hallway looks exactly the same, like it leads to nothing but another hallway that looks exactly like this. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's the mushrooms. This neon edifice, this absolutely ghastly abomination, this temple, it offers something, it promises something. But what does it promise? Does it promise food? Does it promise sustenance? If it does promise food, if it does give me something to eat, I have but ask this, at what cost? Well, it's the next day. I had fun existing in absolutely bizarre liminal spaces. The hallways in this hotel are just the creepiest thing in the freaking world, man. And just like walking up on this neon monstrosity over here in the middle of the night, like, like a flat, plain, barren desert with nothing in it. And then there's just like, eat at Joe's in the middle of it, like Satan's Cafe in the middle of the desert or something like that. It was really weird. I'm like expecting freaking Tom Waits playing the devil to walk up and make me a deal I can't refuse. Anyway, <laughs> huge. This, none of this would have been possible without you, dude. Circus Bear Moto, my pleasure. My pleasure. Um, who is, makes amazing content. Fuck the content. Fuck my content. Fuck all that shit. Because YouTube and motorcycles has always been about, I would say one thing, but I'll, I'll probably say like three things. It's always been about a few things, and it's been way more about the people I meet, hang out with, and the things that we do together more than actually making the content. So... But so go throw him a subscribe anyway, yeah, yeah, because subscribe anyway. Yeah, he freaking picked this shovel head up. He took it to Legion to get all the work done. I was mailing stuff to his house. He picked me up from the airport. You're the man, and I really, 
really, really it's appreciate it. Now, we'll see how much I appreciate you facilitating this shit show when I'm broke down somewhere in the middle of the Nevada desert. <laughs> but that's a story for another day. For today, I appreciate you. Nice. Till next time, y'all. Keep it weird. All right, guys, just wanted to record a quick outro to this video that is different from the normal outro. I am actually on the road right now with the shovel head. Me and David Tyler are en route currently as I'm filming this. And I edited this video today, so as you're watching this, we are about to hit the road and we'll probably be on the road while you're watching it. If you want live updates, go head over to Instagram. I just wanted to put a message at the end of this video because Abel Circus Bear Moto, the guy who helped me pick this bike up, the guy who picked me up from Portland and or picked me up from the airport and showed me so much hospitality. He actually rode out with me to PCH and uh, we separated ways there. Literally, uh, probably just a few miles after he left me, he was in a very severe motorcycle accident. Um, he broke every single rib on his left side, I think. He uh, had a collapsed lung that now has pneumonia in it, uh, fractured ankle, fractured wrist, broken collarbone, brain bruising. It's just, it's a really, really just a devastating accident. And I just, it's, it just, it just, it hit me. I've been looking at his sticker down on the tank of the shovel head this entire time. Just thinking about the fact that as I was like rolling down PCH, he was sitting there like literally fighting for his life on the side of the road. Just brings it home that this, what we do is, is dangerous. You know, motorcycles can be incredibly dangerous. It's a risk everybody takes when they hop on one. I had met his wife. I'd met, I, you know, I'd hung out with them. They're just absolutely amazing people. And I hate that they're having to go through this right now. You know, I can't help but sit there and think that, man, well, you know what? He wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have been there riding home if I hadn't asked him to pick me up. And then, you know, we decided to ride out to, to PCH. But, you know, I know that's not what it is, but it still has just been kind of weighing pretty heavy on me. Anyway, um, make sure you go subscribe to his channel. He's still in the hospital as of right now, but I've been talking with his wife. Um, he's obviously going to miss a lot of work. They did start a GoFundMe. Um, if you guys would like to help out, donate a couple bucks to Abel and his wife so they can get through this and have a little bit of a buffer zone while he makes his recovery. His wife is actually 100% uh, disabled as well. So um, they're just, they've got a, <clears throat> they got a pretty long road of physical therapy and recovery, uh, in front of them. So if you got a couple bucks, I'll have a link to, uh, their GoFundMe down below. I'll certainly be putting some money in there myself. Um, anyway, I hate to leave the video on such a bummer. Uh, I mean, even with that, I've been, I, I actually talked to Circus Bear Moto for the very first time today. <laughs> uh, so he was able to text for the very first time today, literally like 15 minutes before I recorded this outro. And the only thing he asked was I really hope that you and David are having an absolutely amazing time on the road. So that, that was the first thing he said from his hospital bed to us. So that says he's in pretty good spirits and he's excited about either rebuilding the gold wing that he wrecked or getting another bike and getting back on the road. Already talking about riding again from the hospital bed and even his wife is already talking about getting on the back. Check out that GoFundMe link down below.